In this last section, I want to look at some more uh, psychological approaches to obesity that are often used with a specific like counselor or a psychotherapist or a psychiatrist as well. So um, probably the gold standard when it comes to uh, psychotherapy and obesity is something called cognitive behavioral therapy. This is the, the treatment modality that's used the most and is especially effective for individuals with a uh, binge eating disorder. But I actually wanted to start with one that's kind of gaining in popularity and that is more of a hot topic these days with psychologists and counselors uh, compared to in the past. So Acceptance and Commitment Therapy Act is about mindfulness and it's about acceptance while we move towards a particular goal. So all of us, part of being human <laughs> is that sometimes negative thoughts, negative feelings, negative emotions creep up. There are very few humans that do not have that. Okay, they are probably sitting on a mountainside meditating right now. <laughs> but most of us who live in this world, you know, have these thoughts, have these emotions that come up and they're just part of being alive, being human. And so what acceptance and commitment therapy does is it's, it's more focused on allowing these feelings and these emotions to come up, accepting that they're there and not letting them stop you from the pursuit of what you're trying to pursue, something you're trying to pursue that's aligned with your values. So for instance, if what you're trying to pursue is more physical activity, or what you're trying to pursue is um, a reduction in caloric intake or slower eating or whatever, you don't let a, you know, maybe you're trying to do those things and then you look in the mirror one day and you see a double chin and you see an extra roll and you feel really shitty about it. And there's like a negative thought that comes up and a negative feeling that comes up as well. With acceptance and commitment therapy, what we would focus on is like allowing those thoughts to be there, seeing them there, but not letting that stop you from still trying to eat well that day, from still, let's say, exercising that day. Okay, this is something I don't practice this exactly. I practice kind of a, my own form of this where like, you know, sometimes I do look in a mirror and I feel not attractive, you know, or, you know, I put on jeans that don't fit and my head wants to spiral or I have a negative emotion because of something that's going on in my life. And again, my head wants to spiral and I want to fight it. I want to resist it. Okay. What acceptance commitment theory argues is that a lot of the times when we're going after like gambling or drug use or food, we're doing these things to escape feeling a certain way or thinking a certain way. That's what emotional eating is. It's trying to escape feeling anything sometimes. Okay. So this is about transforming our relationship with unwanted thoughts and body sensations and feelings. Okay? And instead of trying to avoid these negative behaviors, seeing them there while still moving forward. Okay? So for instance, I look in a mirror, I see a double chin, I see an extra roll, my jeans don't fit. Instead of that like spiraling me into feeling really shitty about myself, you know, I'm like, I see it there, you know, and I accept that sometimes when I see myself in the mirror and I have a double chin, it's going to feel shitty. I see that there but I'm going to still eat well today, right? But I'm still going to exercise today. Okay. So it's more about watching and, and disconnecting, not identifying with your feelings and your thoughts. Our feelings are there to guide us. They don't define us. Okay. If you can watch your thoughts, if you can watch your feelings, then you're not them. You're the thing watching those. Okay. So if you can do that, that means that you can watch those feelings and thoughts be there while still you having a commitment to move in a different direction while still seeing there. It's like that jerk, <laughs> that jerk in your life. that's always like there it's like da, 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 talking, you know, telling you you suck or whatever else, you know, you see it there, but you're not going to stop me. I just accept that you're, you're part of my reality, but I'm going to keep moving in this particular direction. Okay, so ACT is sometimes used an acronym to represent accept your thoughts and emotions, 
choose a valued direction, a place you want to go towards, and then take action towards that direction while accepting that you're still going to have certain thoughts and emotions. Okay. Since this is a newer area of research with respect to obesity, there's not a lot of um, evidence that, you know, that really supports it. That said, it's it's been used in other disciplines with uh, a decent evidence base. With respect to obesity, um, I just have a few studies to support it, which is one randomized control trial that found uh, improved eating, mental health, weight, self-stigma, and psychological inflexibility at eight-week follow-up. Even a one-day ACT workshop was shown to improve um, physical activity at three-month and six-month follow-up. Okay, And then in a six-week pilot study with adolescents, who uh, had ACT therapy, they did see a small reduction in BMI, an improvement in cognitive restraint, which you could call willpower, and a reduction in hunger and a small increase in physical activity. So the evidence base is building. Um, I just like the concept of this quite a bit. Okay, and it could be used a bit with like, you know, you can combine modalities too with com cognitive behavioral therapy. It kind of depends on what that therapist feels is right for that person or sometimes what the therapist was trained in, okay? CBT, like kind of the basics of CBT start with the fact that our thoughts create our feelings and our feelings create our behaviors and our behaviors create our thoughts, okay? So where we're gonna intervene is in one or all of those things. It's a lot of cognitive, okay? The big difference with ACT though is that with CBT, I'm usually challenging things as opposed to accepting and allowing, I'm challenging them. So I see a negative thought that comes up. So let's go back to what I talked about before. I look in a mirror, I, I look fat, I tell myself I am fat, I'm ugly, and I'm never gonna find someone to love me, <laughs> which is like 20 years of my life, my thinking process. I would just love to hug my former self if I could anyways. But in that case, like, so I look larger in a mirror, okay, that's true. So the thought that is associated with that is I'm fat and then a feeling which I didn't identify as maybe I'm unworthy, right? So I see those things and then I start challenging them. Am I fat? Okay, well, maybe I am obese. Does that make me unworthy, right? Is the next thought unworthy and is the, sh sorry, the feeling might be shame or guilt that's associated with that. Can I challenge the unworthiness? And that's often at the foundation of a lot of our mental health related concerns is this ultimate feeling of unworthiness. Okay. In my case, what I would say is that I am fundamentally worthy, just like you are fundamentally worthy. And anyone that's ever told us that we aren't fundamentally worthy because of how we look or how much money we have or what color our skin is, etc., they're just full of shit. Okay, because we are all fundamentally worthy. Sorry, <laughs> I get excited about these things. But again, in CBT, we're challenging these things. We're challenging these thought patterns. We challenge them with common sense, right? If you think everyone hates you, do they actually hate you? Okay, well, how does that feel? Why does it feel that way? Where is that feeling maybe coming from too? Okay, so the practitioner in this helps a client or patient become aware of these negative or limiting beliefs and thoughts and tries to challenge them. And this is typically coupled with some relaxation, maybe some breathing techniques as well, coping strategies, resilience training, stress management, it kind of depends on the person. Okay, but the idea here is to help people challenge the thoughts, beliefs, and behaviors that are standing in their way from feeling good. But each person is going to be different. So we'd have to, the therapist would have to work with the person to kind of get behind that and to actually, again, not identify with those thoughts and behaviors and, and feelings. Okay, if, like if you can watch something, that's not you. <laughs> the person watching is you. Okay, so how do we like challenge those things that aren't really us and that are standing in our way as well? Okay. Um, one last concept that I had to throw in and I didn't know where else to put it, so I put it here, <laughs> is this concept of mindful eating. And mindful eating is a strategy that could be employed alongside CBT or ACT, uh, helping someone as a kind of a positive psychology trick with, um, with eating behavior. And mindful eating is about like being super present while you're eating. 
It's about like looking at your food, maybe touching your food too, putting it in your mouth, feeling the sensations, thinking about how it feels, maybe doing a little dance of excitement, <laughs> putting away distractions, putting away your cell phone instead of, you know, eating while you're looking at your cell phone and you're like mindlessly eating or eating fries in your car while you're driving you're actually paying attention putting your your thinking brain on the task right so it's it's better able to um, understand how much you're eating and compare that to what you think is an, an actual appropriate amount to eat as well okay you get your hippocampus involved in that as well Okay, so these mindful based strategies um, have been shown to reduce mindless eating. They have been shown to reduce binge eating in some cases and to improve um, BMI, to lower BMI as well. Okay, so these are an other potential strategies that can help individuals with obesity figure out what works for them. None of the things I talked about in this entire module are going to work for everyone. And that's why I keep talking about the necessity to individualize. And if you're watching this video and you're not helping anyone else, but you're trying to help yourself and kind of get your own eating behaviors and physical activity behaviors under control in a place where you feel peaceful, take what serves you. Leave what doesn't. You don't have to do all of these things, just like your patient or your client doesn't have to do all of these things. But there's an evidence base for everything I've talked about. And these things do work for some people. So what's the like, what's the menu? Or what are you selecting from the menu of options that are going to help you or your client finally feel in control of their eating behavior and their size, okay? In a way that's realistic. What's the answer? Again, it depends on that person. But like I keep saying, one size fits all fits no one. And it's about figuring out what's going to work for you to help you have a good relationship with your body, to have a good physical wellness, but also mental and social wellness as well. And ultimately, the goal is quality of life. Because if we're improving physical well-being while messing with mental and social well-being, we are not doing a good job. Health is a complete state of physical, mental and social well-being. So what's the menu? What are the menu selections that are going to help this person do all of those things? Okay, and it's going to take time and it's going to take effort and it's going to change over time as well. Okay, but we got to get away from these fad based approaches and instead work with our individual to figure out what's going to help them. And maybe for some people with obesity, we also have to consider pharmacological options and bariatric options. Because what I haven't said is that lifestyle management can only get you so far. No matter how hard some people try, obesity fundamentally changes our anatomy and our physiology. And individuals with obesity often have really difficult time managing appetite. So that's where pharmacological and bariatric options are also worth considering, which is something we'll talk about in the next unit. See you then.